NBA 2K21 Next Gen continues to make history in some of the worst ways imaginable. And at the same note, there's some updates for current gen as of last week and for next gen as of today, fellas. So there's a lot of news to talk about. And trust me, I'm about to get heated because I've been hot back into 2K21 Next Gen because I'm not gonna lie, I took a break. And as I've been playing, it's just been so frustrating the small, significant details that 2K has missed with this year's game. And we're gonna jump into all of it. Fellas, first of all, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Uh, let's not wait any further. Let's go. Uh, first things first, Rival Day didn't start. I know some of y'all like, Agent, what are you talking about? Uh, let me explain. Rival Day was supposed to be like the big park event that everyone's supposed to be excited to play because they brought it back. I mean, they used to have it and people loved it in 2K16 and all of that. But it seems as though 2K is just doing away with a lot of the ideas that they first began 2K21 next gen with. Ronnie 2K put out this post on Twitter last week saying this. Our mayors are getting another term after their work with Make-A-Wish on the showdown. I felt as though they have more value to provide in their terms, so we're doubling the turn. He then followed to say Rival Weekend goes on this weekend as usual. That's important. Keep that in mind. Turns out it's time for Rival Day. People's hopping on. They're excited to play Rival Day. There's a lot of stakes, even though we just found out the mayors is going to keep their terms this year. Well, Rival Day, well, it just didn't start. Badge Plug put out a tweet saying, 2K forgot to start Rival Day. Next Gen is finished. Dignify says, heard they didn't even start Rival Day on Next Gen with a crying laughing emoji. Solo put out a tweet saying, nah, bro, there's no way 2K forgot to start Rival Day. As to make matters worse, I can't tell if Ronnie is just oblivious or he did this on purpose, but he put out a tweet saying, Rival Weekend is lit. Dignify quote tweeted it saying, there's no way. Power replied saying, it's not working. Is this a joke? And so for hours, people were just waiting for this park event that 2K has been gassing up pre-launch and post-launch. And throughout the course of NBA 2K21 Next Gen, nothing until Ronnie decided to put out this tweet on Twitter saying, Per our dev team, Rival Weekend has been postponed until next weekend. Which kind of just sounds like they forgot about the event. Because a moment ago, it was right on schedule, but now it's being delayed and we didn't find out until it was after hours. But that's besides the point, at least we know for now that Rival Weekend is next weekend instead of this. There was a little drama in the NBA 2K League verse I wanna discuss quickly. I'm not gonna get too deep into it because most of you guys probably don't watch the league, but this one's pretty interesting, trust me. So there was NBA 2K League draft, the league, all the try hard 2K players, they come into this league, they play professionally. They get paid to play 2K professionally. Now there was one player in the draft that everyone just kinda expected to be taken. One, because he's popular and he's a streamer on Twitch and he mainly streams NBA 2K content, but two, because he was also really good at the game, but they were baffled to find that even though there were 60 picks in this year's draft, he didn't get chosen. There was a, oh, there was a, uh, what's the word for it? A fallout on Twitter? It goes like this. Hollywood tweeted saying, I'm dead ass so shocked. Why was Fanta not drafted? Keep your head up, bro. We know you're the damn best. Fanta decided to break his silence after the draft. He posted this on Twitter saying, you tell people they need talent and marketability to make the league. I have both at the highest level and I'm seeing people pick friends. MFs don't want to win. Tell me how I'm supposed to stay professional after what I just watched. And this is not the first instance of players feeling like they got cheated at the draft. I mean, last year, Dirk, who was a commentator for the league and one of the best centers in the draft, did not get chosen, which broke my heart because I love Dirk, but it's whatever. Dirk conveniently though replied to Fanta saying, was in the same position as you a year ago. It's super frustrating, but look at this as an opportunity to just keep grinding your stream and growing your personal brand. Always next year if you want to go at it again, keep doing you, man. An OG in the 2K community, D-Man, said on Twitter, I was upset last night for my folks that didn't get drafted, but there were only 60-something spots, so someone was getting left out regardless. It just sucks to see, shake my head. I need the 2K League to get some more teams, G. I can only imagine working your ass off, feeling like you were like a sure shot for this position because you you were that good and you had the uh, like the marketability and you were popular, so that's a benefit to the league. They need some popular players in there. And just to not get chosen, to sit there all draft, I can't even imagine that has to be a brutal experience, which is why every time I talk to Dirk, I make a joke about it. <laughs> anyway, besides the point for the next story, there's been an update. So interestingly enough, current gen got the spring NBA 2K update over a week before next gen got it. I'm gonna get into this in a moment, but I genuinely feel as though this is my theory now. NBA 2K21 next gen released. Because people already bought current gen and most of the people couldn't just afford to get next gen, I genuinely believe that not many people have bought the next gen version of the game. And therefore 2K doesn't feel incentivized to continue updating the next gen version 
of the game. I mean, current gen got the update on March 10th, but next gen got it on March 17th. So while it is possible that maybe Sony and, and Microsoft just took longer to approve the patches on next gen, it also just feels like current gen is getting a lot more support because current gen has more players playing it. Besides that though, once you click on the patch notes, and this one here is for next gen, it doesn't sound like they did much of anything. I mean, most of the patch notes is just updates they've made to player likeness or significant facial animation updates, which probably just means that the people that do the graphics got an opportunity in All-Star Weekend to just like take face scans of different players that look bad in the game and update their faces. The city has received an all new spring update to help bring in the warmer months. This is gonna be going live starting Thursday. What day is it today? Wednesday, so it's not live yet. But aside from that, it's just small updates to playbooks and dark matter cards and more my team and performance issues to the overall experience, just vague stuff. So if you're a park player, both the current gen and the next gen version of the game just dropped updates that are largely insignificant to you, except there's a spring update now, so there's gonna be no more snow in the city. I'll say this, it does feel good to have a form of update because the developers have been ghosts. I mean, Ronnie2k is active and on the My Team side, they're promoting a lot of the events and things. They just dropped some like dark matter tournament challenge on Twitter. So there's things going on in the NBA 2K verse, but they don't have to do with gameplay one and the city two. I'm trying to think why is 2K not putting a decent amount of support for the next gen version of the game considering how broken it is. I just got the chance over the last three, four days, I have been playing 2K21 next gen after taking a pretty long break and it is baffling how much small things are broken in the game that just haven't been fixed and then to think that updates are dropping and for some reason none of the things that are broken in the game are being addressed to me is mind-blowing that says to me there's a severe lack of support why would you not support the most recent and updated version of the game likely because not many people are playing it and so current gen is the one seeing a majority in the boatload of updates which is a shame especially for the people that bought a next-gen system and and then 2K21 all over again on next gen. And the only silver lining I can think of is 2K22 better not be ass cheeks on launch. Because if you're taking everybody's attention away from current gen and specifically next gen to focus on the next gen version of the game, considering that the next gen version dropped in November and they have to release another version of the game. Not they have to, they want to and they've kind of forced themselves to every single year. That better be a perfect launch. Because the launch of NBA 2K21 next gen was largely unacceptable. And for a lot of big reasons, reasons that everybody knows, but also for small reasons. As I've been playing 2K21 Action, I've just been frustrated with the experience. I've been on Prime largely and it's, it's everything. The, the latency is just out of control. It is some of the worst I've seen, probably worse than I remember experiencing on 2K17, which was brutal. For some reason, when you're in the Prime Arena and you're just shooting around, you can't change animations or badges, so you have to leave and then come back. But then once you leave and come back, sometimes your whole team has to leave and come back or you guys just end up in different courts there's no person to just pass you the ball so for some reason you're just rebounding your own shots and it kind of gets in the way of you putting up buckets but when you leave the pro am arena you have to wait for your name to pop up in the city before you hop back in or else it just won't let you load it'll tell you there's a server error and when you're in the city regardless of whether or not you've participated in a park event it'll still give you a graphic saying Thank you for playing Anti Up. Thank you for playing this park event that I didn't play. The list is long, ladies and gentlemen, of small things that just impede my ability to smile while I'm playing. Because I can't do it in the Prime Arena, I leave the Prime Arena to change my jump shot in the jump shot crater. But even though 2K was boasting these incredibly fast load times, I have to wait sometimes minutes for my jump shot crater to load up, which is worse than it was in 2K18, which had some of the worst loading screens in 2K history. Talking about loading screens, there is a Zion fucking loading screen that will never end. And the solution is to delete your game and your save data and then re-download the game. But when you do that, if you have four or five players, now when you load up my career, all of those players are gonna be unnamed. So you have to spend time loading in each of those players just so it shows you the text saying that this is your play shot, this is your sharp, this is your two-way. And even when you get in the Pro-Am Arena, it tells you about some League Night feature that they quit doing. They continuously update you about a thing that no longer exists in the video game. How? How, how are this many things in the game wrong? And these are the small things I'm naming. We all know about the large things. I, I read the comments on all of these videos and I remember I dropped a video talking about some quality of life updates that NBA 2K needs to make and some guy in the comments was like, there's so many issues in the game and you're focusing on these ones? And it's like, guys, you've seen me talk about the big issues time and time again. You know what also helps you enjoy the quality experience of gaming online, ladies and gentlemen? 
quality of life fixes, small things. The things that actually don't take too long for 2K to fix, but for some reason they still haven't fixed. And it's becoming very apparent to me that 2K took no advantage of next gen technology. It doesn't feel like it at all, fellas. I mean, the load times for the jump shot crater and the Zion loading screen are absolutely preposterously atrocious. But that's not the case for everybody. Sometimes a jump shot crater loads up quick and some people don't have the Zion issue when they're loading up the game. True. The whole experience just feels like largely unresponsive. People still lag out of games regularly even though it's not an internet issue. The latency when you're playing, I swear, has to be over 300 milliseconds. It is horribly atrocious and genuinely brutal to play on. But on a positive note, NBA 2K made this a point when the game launched and they had a server cap of 100 in the city. When you scroll through your phone now, you could see like 500 names in there. And when you when you skateboard around the city and you're doing your thing, you see people populated. And, and every time you pull up to a different affiliation area and borough, you can see people playing in that borough. That was not the case at launch. So servers have improved, I guess, in that department. But an improvement from two frames per second and a 100 server cap on a massive city. And the more I've been playing Pro-Am the last few days, the more I've realized that the changes that 2K attempted to make on the gameplay side of things backfired. Although the gameplay does feel better than current gen, it immediately you forget how good it feels the second someone drives in the lane and performs their 19th contact dunk of the game. It almost feels like defense in the game is useless. You can contest somebody, but if you're on the side of them, it does not count because Hall of Fame blinders is overpowered. So even though blinders saw a nerf and contact dunk saw a nerf, you still see an obsessive amount of them. They still overwhelmingly mediate the way that the game is played in a way that takes away from the enjoyment. Again, you hear me saying it a lot in this video, there's a lot of things that just take away from the enjoyment. And if 2K21 Next Gen didn't sell well enough for 2K to put a priority on it, then it seems like these are just issues that you're gonna have to live with. And if you guys remember in 2K18, which in my opinion is still the worst 2K of all time, when I was playing 2K18 that year, man, I went to Pro-Am, man. I seeked refuge with Pro-Am, and Pro-Am, I had a phenomenal time streaming and playing Pro-Am every single night. So I was like, maybe I could do that with Next Gen 2K21. And as I hop on, it's like, how did the game mode that barely sees improvements go the opposite direction? It has gotten worse. The League Night feature doesn't work. You can't change animations and jump shots in the Prime Arena. The latency is genuinely worse. There's just a lot of features in it. Like for some reason, when you sit at the hash, your, your release is different than when you stand at the three point line. And it's like, why does that exist? And the whole experience is just straight contact dunks. The meta in the game is dog. It's like three big men that shoot. That's the meta in the game. And everybody has those six foot seven power forwards. So even though the build system is supposed to give us the flexibility we want, so people using a lot of the same builds, you don't see a lot of variation. But that being said, 2K18 was just snatchbacks and blowbys. And it's not that the meta in that game was all that great. That's true too. So for what it's worth, I am hopping back on 2K21 next gen and I'm trying to have fun playing. And it, I just kept getting taken away from the experience. I've been playing a lot of private matches though on Prime because I heard the ranked experience was horrible. And I'm not lying to you. I'm having more fun on Prime than I have, I've had in the city. So I'm gonna continue to stick playing with Prime. Although I am gonna try current gen to see what that experience is like. But 2K, uh, if you made it to this part of the video, please pay attention. Cause I genuinely think this could save the game. Now, I have mentioned a lot of small quality of life issues here in this video. I mentioned some big issues like how garbage the servers are. 2K, I, I'm I'm dead ass. If you guys are just gonna abandon the game, if that's gonna be what's gonna happen and we're just gonna have to wait till 2K21 next gen and it's gonna be zero communication, just do this one thing. And don't tell me it's not possible. Plenty of developers have done it. You won't have to make no other changes if you're gonna abandon the game. Just put proximity chat in there. I swear, that's all you have to do. People will come flooding back to play this video game that you guys have abandoned. It will be like Super Smash Bros. Melee. The community is gonna come in droves to play this brand new experience. Cause that's what it's gonna feel like. 2K is busy creating like a city and park events. And while that does add to the aesthetic and give you something new to look at, very relevant, right? We don't want the same, same parks and cities. We don't want that. What people are asking for when they ask for something new is a new experience, 2K. And if you haven't learned from me sitting here and batting it over and over and over again, proximity chat will give 2K players that have been waiting for something new because you've been rehashing a lot of the same game modes and rewards when you level up and experiences something new. 
I'm telling you, bro. If they are going to abandon the game, just get one developer to work on Proximity Chat. Add it into the game as a test. Just to see before 2K22. Just to see. Let's just see, huh? And also, give people a reporting feature for people who abuse it. And a mute all feature. Just like a button people can click on their controller when they don't want to deal with it. Don't make it hard for people to mute it if they don't want to experience it. That way, the people that want that new experience can have it. And the people that play 2K to just be by themselves in the neighborhood and be a random, they could do that too. Oh, in that case, every Everybody wins, 2K. You get to focus on the next version of the game. We get something new to deal with. And at the same time, this is a win-win all around, fellas. That's it for the news. Click on this video. I paid celebrities to tell 2K to say the things I wanted 2K to accomplish in their game. It was a funny video. Not many people watched it. So go check it out if you missed it. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.